All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is our weekly edition of the Real Estate Backstory, where we kind of uh, pull back the covers and expose the soft underbelly of the real estate world here in the Atlanta market. So my name is Alan Rich. I'm the managing broker here at Max One Realtor Realtor Partners and my partner. partner. Oh, sweet. Mm-hmm. My name's Ming Richardson. I'm the compliance broker for Max One Realtor and Realty Partners. And we kind of want to start off this week with, with a request that we had uh, asking for us to talk about, you know, agent feedback and, and you know, how we deal with with listings and you know just kind of like the courteous side of things when it comes out there so like like it starts with when you start you know when when you when you begin to set up your showings and when you set up your showings you want to make sure that, that you that you schedule those out uh with enough well, time to actually meet the the appointments that you have so anyways um buyer's agent please be courteous once again uh to ensure if you're not going to make it on time i mean showing time makes it really easy so right easy. now where you can either call the agent from the app mm-hmm. or text the agent and say hey i'm running 15 minutes late due to atlanta traffic we all understand that that's not a problem and also buyer's agent please give the listing agent feedback because the more feedback you give them the more the seller will consider whether or not they list too high just right or there's too many deferred maintenances on the property. So, you know, a lot of time, if a seller knows that for the next buyer or even your current buyer, if the seller say, hey, I will fix these items, you know, the listing agent can communicate with you, say, hey, my seller's willing to do this. Are you willing to make an offer based on these things? And so it's at the end of the day, don't discard a property because it may have a deferred maintenance. Sometimes it's about the communication and also listing agent. I know you guys hustle a lot and sometimes you do have unreasonable sellers and that will not listen and they hear what's going on in the marketplace and therefore they just go. Matter of fact, I'm, I was a broker on duty this weekend, had an agent call me and just told me that the seller basically would not let him get two words in and just basically uh, wants demands um, the appraisals be done after due diligence because they do not want to be double whammy on the repair and uh, appraisal value. So with that being said, understand a seller do not have to sell property if they don't have to, if they don't want to, yeah. but it does not do them justice because the whole objective is selling their product. So once again, have a good buyer, a seller consultation and buyer's agent open the communication because I think a lot of sellers are willing to negotiate at this point. Well, not only that, you know, like, like ha- starting that feedback is so important when, when you do reach out and, mm-hmm. and, and speak to the listing agents. And by the way, listing agents, answer your phones. Uh, but on, on the, <clears throat> you know, as far as when it comes back to feedback, being able to take that feedback as a listing agent and share that with your clients can help sometimes, you know, like let them know what, what other agents are seeing in the marketplace and that kind of stuff. It really is kind of beneficial for everybody at that point. And listing agents, sometimes it doesn't hurt for you to pull some comps uh, after and, and and send it to your seller. These are the property condition of these home selling in the, in your area with similar pricing. Okay. And I think that will help. I'm with you. All right. I want to kind of jump over and and really, really change gears here. And and what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about uh, the gap that we have in black and white home ownership, home ownership rates. Uh, you know, they just released the new stats and, and, and black, white home ownership gap is the largest that it's been in a decade. And that's something that like, like for us, you know, like, like, you know, first of all, it could be like, 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 what's the white guy talking about black, you know, black home ownership rates kind of thing? And, and honestly, I care about my community. And, and here in the South, we, we, you know, like, 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 we are very integrated uh, communities. And so, like, 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 the, the, the black community is very, very important to me, just the same as, as the white community. Everybody is kind of thing. You know, we, we have a lot of diversity here. And so, understanding that. You know, I, I'm not trying to come at this as, uh, you know, like, like for me, it's it's not about race, but it is about trying to trying to educate because it, it's one of those things that that, that I'm going to implore you to kind of share with, you know, I mean, with all of your buyers, you know, the power of home ownership, and 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 it's not just a black white thing; it really is kind of across the board. But this is something that that has stood out for a long time, and 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 I know that you know th- there was a point where. 
uh, in our past where redlining really affected a lot of black home ownership rates. Absolutely. And so, you know, uh, and while I understand that, that for, uh, you know, a, a lot of the African-American community, they kind of started off, you know, kind of being, being knocked down and, and held back a bit. Well, now's the time to really look at the power of home ownership. And, and one thing I want to kind of share with, with, with everybody, it's not just a, a black white thing, but this is one that, that like, this is what our property value growth is in the Atlanta area for the past three years. And so in, so in 2020 to 2019, it grew about 9%. Then 2020 to 2021, it grew about 20%. And then another 10%. And so, you know, if you look at the, at the property value growth in the last Overall. three years, just our average is 46% property value appreciation. And so guess what you don't get if you're a renter? Nothing. Any of that, right? You know? And this is how our seller are now able to sell their property they bought for, back in 2019 for at least $100,000. And a lot of them have that, um, that figure in their head. But yeah. once again, depending on property condition, if it needs a lot of different maintenance, that house is going to be discounted. Well, it, it is, but you know, the whole point here is that is that you don't like 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 you, you don't, don't, go, you you don't know, grow you know, well. Yeah, black, white, green, yellow doesn't matter, right? Um, like like property value. I mean, like 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 real wealth in the United States is tied up in home ownership. Absolutely. And so we have to understand that. Now, one of the things on the positive side is there was a new study released that that you know so over the pandemic, since the pandemic. African-American homeowners had the highest value appreciation out of all homeowner races, you know, like, like, like they broke it down by races. So this is in the Atlanta area. And you can see that, that the African-American community had the greatest amount of, of home value appreciation. And so when you say that, you know, we have one of the, 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 the our rate is lower than it should be, but we're seeing really positive trends and it's, it's the path to, to wealth inside the United States. If we care about our communities, and I don't care what race, but if we care about the communities that we service, then then we're going to talk about the power of home ownership. Absolutely. And there are times, and in, in even in our market right now, is is buying and renting. What's what's the cheaper short term solution? It's really really pretty flat. Like like you can't say, oh, financially it's much better for me to rent than it is for me to buy, or it's much better it's for me to buy. Easy and, to it, rent. And, and so it's it's it's. But you know, right, like 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 the short term solutions that there really isn't one. Rents have gone up. Prices have gone up uh, on on home prices have gone up. So it's not like it, it, it right now. It's actually pretty flat when it comes to is it cheaper to rent or cheaper to buy? It's pretty even there. But then when you look at, at, at where wealth is tied into that, it is such an important conversation for us to have inside our community. Well, here's Asian, I, I highly suggest that you uh, contact the your preferred lender or your company's lender to start doing homeowner um uh, first time home buyer uh, seminar. And honestly, that is not just restricted to the your brokerage. You can do this in your church community or any community that is interested in listening. Yeah, and it's strong. All right. Now, speaking of uh, first time buyers, you know, one of our challenges this week okay. is we're continuing to see more pressure that, that's hitting our, our interest rates right now. So we're at 6.65. It hasn't been moving in the right direction. And it's really been tied to uh, inflation. And so, but the inflation that we're seeing, uh, like, like, let me show you what I'm talking about. And so like, like this is PCE, which is personal consumption expenditures. And so you can see that for the, you know, almost the past year, it's been boop, 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 it's been working its way down. And then everyone was really happy seeing it work its way down. And then in January, that number went back up, ticked up. But that tick up meant that we weren't continuing to decline. And so if we're not continuing to, to decline, the markets kind of went and started freaking out. And so, you know, like, like, like inflation affects interest rates. It follows a 10 year treasury, but guess what affects a 10 year treasury? Inflation. And so right. that's one of the big deals. Now, hey, I think that's gift card spending in January. Just want you to know. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, at the same time, we see that, that, you know, like like our economy is still pretty strong. I feel that, that we are probably heading into, into a really mild recession. Mm -hmm. But, you know, jobless claims are, are at some of its lowest levels. So like, like employment's really strong when it comes to housing. What's important? 
employment. Yeah. Correct. So, you know, it is it is about inflation. We're seeing inflation kind of, you know, like like continuing to be very, very what they call sticky. Uh, matter of fact, I just got another uh, inflation data point to share with you. And so this is the average tooth fairy payout per lost tooth is is up again. So like like it used to be about a buck fifty to, you know, between one and two dollars is what we paid out. Okay, I'm being funny. I know, and you don't seem to be laughing. Um, but the average tooth fairy payout is almost is right now six bucks. And so I love my little people, and and I and and you know whoever is the tooth fairy in your household, uh, I'm not sure our kids are getting six bucks. But you know, uh, maybe the tooth fairy. That age may, yeah, We're maybe good. yeah. Our, ours are older now, but uh, yeah, it, it's hard lately. Tooth fairy inflation. That's but a real funny. deal. All right. Now, on the series side, what are some things that we can do? Well, there's two things. One is that I think we really have to make sure that we are talking about that we are shopping rates because we see a huge disparity from lender to lender right now. Mm -hmm. the, each lender is, is assessing risk. And so when they look at that risk, we're seeing where, where you know, sometimes really drastic swings in, in the rates that the borrowers can get. And so that's an important one. You know, the other one is that HUD right now, as it had, you know, HUD FHA loans right now, and we are seeing an uptick in FHA mm -hmm. loans, mainly because the, you know they're 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 dropping it by what's called thirty bips, uh, and and really what this what it all comes down to is is the mortgage insurance, you know, the amount of premium that the, the, the they FHA borrowers, the yeah, FHA loan is now decreasing, and by that decrease is average saving of a about eight hundred dollars. Um, on an annualized basis. I think so, it's supposed to go a thousand, but yeah, uh, yeah. Conservatively, I, okay. I'm a little conservative. conservative. Yeah. So on the average, that is about what seventy five dollars. I think it's about hundred bucks a month yeah. on average. So that's my well, average. That's twelve hundred. You know that. I know. I understand. <laughs> I've, my average is a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a year, but but you know it depends on your price. You know, if, if it's a two hundred thousand dollar right. house, eight hundred bucks is probably pretty appropriate. If it's a three fifty, it's probably a little bit closer to my number, right? <laughs> Y'all follow me here. So anyway, but, but what we're what we're really trying to say is that li there are still options for our lenders out there shopping your rates. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, right now we're seeing a lot more FHA loans coming through the brokerage. We're seeing where and and you know for for listing agents, you know, talking to your sellers about listen, expect to see more FHA loans right now, and we are seeing a a, a higher percentage of FHA loans being presented on offers right now because it's better for the borrowers at the moment. Absolutely. So, uh, as far as our, uh, you know, like, like, how are the rest of our numbers looking at? So let's just kind of run through these real quick. And so you can see our total listings are up over 2022. But when you compare where our total listing counts are, so it's very easy to say, you know what, total, you know, our, our, our total inventory, total listings are up, and they are. But we're still under 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017. We're nowhere near the 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 total inventory that we had available well, in those past years. And I will tell you one reason why is that some of your uh, seller have bought their house at such incredible rate that they're unwilling to give up that rate and trade for another property at a much higher interest rate. Yep. Now, pending listings, pending, you know, pending sales is one that we've been looking at. And pending sales has been, uh, no doubt, trending down, right? And so, or, or not trending down, but it's been below where we where we were last year. But if you really look at, and so you can see that, that kind of on the pink line, you know, where are pending, pending sales coming in at? And so you can see that, yes, we are under where we, you know, pending sales is down from 2020 to what? <laughs> She's making fun of me again. Y'all got to protect me it here. Is, it is above 2019, but 2018, it is 2017, 2017. Like, like that total volume count is still, I mean, like, like what I guess what I'm trying to say, although I'm blabbering it out, is like if you were in business lately, like, like we were in business in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, guess what? Pending listings are higher than when they were in those years. Correct. And so, you know, post pandemic, you know, during the pandemic, we saw all kinds of crazy things going on. There were a lot. Please don't don't think that the real estate market is horrible, right? Because we're not seeing property values decline, which we'll actually look at, you know, uh, momentarily and that kind of thing. Uh, and and you know, for the average consumer, they look at it when when they say how's the market, they want to know is my home worth less than it was previously. For if you're in the real estate industry, 
this is what you look at. Where, you know, what, where's you know, our transaction yeah. volume, that kind of thing. Right. And so what I'm saying is, is historically, our transaction volume, it, while it is down from, from the last couple of years, it's not terrible. So in short amount of word, we're up from pre-pandemic, pre -pandemic, but below during pandemic. Yes. That's a, that, that's a very nice, concise way to put it. Uh, new listings of homes are down. We were looking at, and, and especially in the Atlanta area, at new listings really ticking up, which was something needed, but that softened back, back off. And so we are seeing where our sellers are are holding out until they see the interest rates drop as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, it really is kind of kind of pushing that back down. And you can see that that even here, so like like if you just look in the south, you know, new listing counts versus pre-pandemic, you know, we we have one of the the smallest decreases kind of thing. We're we're at eighteen percent down, so we're not as bad as other places kind of thing. Uh, and so we are seeing where, where our, our, our list prices are, are holding really strong, our, our, our median days on market are, are, are doing really good, that kind of stuff. But, but, you know, here in the South, we don't have, we have a little bit better inventory, but not much, I guess is what I'm really trying to say. Total days on market is not, you know, it is higher than it was in past years. But when you look at us compared to like previous years, same as the others, our days on 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 market is still historically really really low, much lower than 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 our what you would call our normal time frame from like 2017, 2018, 2019. So please, again, I, I just want to make sure that, that that we are communicating that. Yeah, it's very easy to read the the news and be like, the real estate market's this, the real estate market's that, and understand. But like when you look at it in, in in like a much longer context, we're in really good shape. So median list price, and this is the one that we were talking about previously, right? And so you can see that that property values have continued to to appreciate, to and right. so you know, um, and so for those average consumers, you know, when they're looking at is my home worth more this year than it was last year? Yeah. Yes. And and are we looking at at, at drastic property reductions? No, I think we're, we're, we're now we do actually hope it starts leveling out a little bit more. I mean, seven point eight is not bad. Honestly, but we're starting to get back into the range of, of normal, reasonable property value appreciation. You know, year you know, like that twenty percent year and being at, being in double digit property value appreciation. No one is making forty six percent or whatever it was. You, well, you know, you more even, than they were a few years ago. Just the last five years, you know, our average listing was about 250, 260, maybe three hundred, if that. And now our average, this is nationally, average listing is over 400,000. So yeah. that's a quite a bit of jump. It is. And now, but again, therein lies the power of home ownership. Correct. Going all the way back to where we first started. So um, proper, you know, uh, the properties that we're seeing with a price reduction. And so we are seeing where that number is coming down. You can see where. where it took a really steep dive. Yeah, it has been. And, and so we're seeing where. Part of that's coming from having tighter inventory, um, you know, having less total inventory as well as not enough new listings coming on. And then also just our sellers being realistic about their pricing. Well, and that, you know, they're hearing all these things, oh, you can sell your property and get away with no repairs. And that's no longer the case with the, with the rising interest rate. Yep. Now, there's a, a new study out and it said that a majority of people are prioritizing their animals needs when buying their dream home. That's and so funny. it is, but it, it, but it's really, really true. If you think about it and, and, and you know, like, like, like we didn't move, it hadn't been that long ago that we moved. And one of the first things actually before we moved in, what did we have to build? Fence. A fence. We had to put a <laughs> fence in for our dogs because our dogs are sight hounds. They, 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 they would run away, that kind of thing. So we had to deal with that. Um, and so 72% of prospective buyers said that they would not buy their dream home if it didn't accommodate their pets. This is your dream home. And three out of four buyers said, nope, won't do it if it doesn't, if it doesn't meet the needs of my pet. Uh, about a third of folks would give up a shorter commute or an extra room in order to give their, how, their pet a better home. And 68% of current homeowners would rather give up their house than their pet. I, I find that absolutely staggering kind of thing they're and, like family well, look, look i love look i love our puppies i really do and, and you know whether it's a cat or whatever that kind of stuff 
some of y'all got snakes and things, creepy stuff. I'm, I'm not judging. Okay, a little bit, but like, like you know, a couple of things. One is as as buyers agents, you know, understanding the importance of pets in the buying process. Same thing for listing agents, understanding that. Sometimes we have to explain that to our buyers. To I mean, mainly we have, most of the time we have to explain it to our sellers. For our buyers. Sometimes it's the agents, you know, because some agents like I don't do dogs. Well, you have to understand that your your buyers are probably like right now, roughly 75 percent of people, prospective buyers have a, have a pet. And so is that something that we're going to have to deal with? It's something that's really important. This is something that's the shaping pandemic, this. If y'all recall, everybody adopted, all, a dog. everybody adopted a pet of some sort. There was no pet left to be adopted in the human society. So understand that the dynamic has changed. And it's important. That, that, and I guess that's the thing that I'm trying to get across is that understand that pets are part of the buying and selling process now. I mean, back when we got in real estate, it'd be like your dog. Yeah, don't worry about it. That kind of thing. Now, this is, this is this is this is this is a like, like like this is this is one of those factors that really goes into people's decision to buy and sell homes. So we have to make sure that we're taking that into account now. A lot of times we get a lot of questions, you know, um, we're, we're on we're on the uh, the broker helpline and that kind of stuff. And, and, and a lot of times we see we get so many questions asking about Georgia landlord and tenant rules like like, you know, how long does this, does the tenant have to do this? When does it tell when when does the land how long does the landlord need need to, to provide notice? What does that notice have to look like? Listen, guys, if you'll go to Georgia.gov or you can go to the Georgia Community Affairs website. You can download the Georgia tenant landlord tenant handbook directly from there. They got it in a PDF. They even have it in a Word doc kind of thing. And you can download that and it's out there for free. Now, this is useful for both tenants as well as for landlords because it's got the rules and the standards for everybody in there. And so if you're working with investors, this is a great thing to share with your investors. And if you have a tenant that has questions like, can my landlord do this? And, th and my landlord said that and that, 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 that. Again, we don't want to be the ones who- We're not trying... legal counsel. Ah, thank you. There you okay. go. Okay. We're information where we can give the leak the right direction to. So once again, please don't get involved in that because if your brokerage is not in a brokerage of uh, rental uh, or property yeah, management- we don't do property management. Right. None of our agents do property management. But that being said- we get a lot of questions. This is where you appoint them. So please, you know, you know, stay in your lane kind of thing, Correct. but also have the resources that our clients really need. Um, the House has, you know, um, the House of Representatives has approved the remote notary bill. Now, it's unknown. It looks like it'll probably go through the Senate as well kind of thing. And I just say this because a lot, you know, like, like we're notaries. Uh, you know, all of our branch managers are notaries. A lot of real estate agents out there are notaries kind of thing. And so this is going to set nationwide standards because the thing about being a notary is it is so different from state to state. I mean, here in oh. Georgia, it's basically a you know a heartbeat test. If you've got a pulse, you're probably going to be able to get your notary kind of thing. Back you have to be, yeah, but it, it, I mean, as long as you're not a dirt bag, you're going to be able to get your notary kind of thing. Um, and so, but, you know, now this is a thing where, uh, you know, as a notary, we've had to actually physically be there. So now there's going to be some new laws and new rules pertaining to what we can notarize, how we can notarize, and those kind of things coming down. And while it's not come through, it does look like it will. And I'm just trying to give folks a heads up to be, because some of the rules, they may be changing here soon. So pending home sales improve for the second straight month. Okay. And so like we looked at the pending sales earlier, understand that, that pending sales, especially here in the South, are, are trending up. And so right. we're still down from where we were. And, and, and uh, you know, like, like we saw that the numbers were trending down or our numbers are less than, than they have been in the past couple of years. However, we started that kind of uptick. Now, what's going to be interesting to see is, is what these rise, these recent rise in interest rates, how that's going to kind of impact us moving forward. But as it stands right now, pending sales are trending up. And it's not just 
seasonal, right? We're seeing where, where, you know, last year we were down about 33%. We're still down in the 20% less than where we were, but that's, that's, it's a positive trend line. We should see more inventory coming out in March, uh, April, May, when we start have our season as buying and selling. Now, rental rates, we've seen some really positive moves in rental rates. And so, so the red line is kind of like, that's our median. And, And if you look at what Median rent year over year has been doing. Median rent is going down. We've seen a an overall rent trend. So this is important for both uh, for our buyers because so many of our buyers are are you know, especially first time buyers. Our first time buyers are almost, I mean, not exclusively, but to a large percent, right. they're renters. And so understanding that when when those rental rates go down, they can save more. And because. Again, well, the whole power of home ownership. That based kind of on thing. that graph, is about one hundred ten dollars for the last nine months of savings. And, and you can see what 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 the what the actual trend on rents are, and it doesn't matter if it's studio, one bedroom, two bathroom, mm-hmm. two bed, multi, whatever. Um, but the trend across the board is that we've seen where it's continuing to come down, and so you can see that here in the, in like the Atlanta area, the overall medium rent is right at eighteen hundred dollars, and that's down about you know, almost a 1% kind of thing. Mm-hmm. We still have pretty low vacancy rates, but it is actually ticking up. One thing I found that was really interesting is that the home ownership rate, not just black, white, Asian, whatever, overall, our home ownership rate is lower than a lot of the other 50 largest metropolitan areas. And I mean, we're not the the high, uh, the lowest, but we're not on the high end, right? And so the positive side of that is that we have a lot of opportunities to help folks understand the power of home ownership and i know that i'm kind of going full circle all the way back to where we first started off with but that's that's a really important thing if we care about our communities understand that that, you know when when we make or when we when we help people be homeowners it helps our communities it helps them uh, higher quality of life you live longer when you own a home i mean you have better health is it i mean just so many things kind of go along with that correct uh, I want to wrap up here. And so this week on Wednesday, we have Georgia MLS is going to be teaching transaction desk in our Conyers office. Please, this is so important. Please go and attend because Georgia MLS is now coming up with some new products. And I think it'll be very beneficial to you. Uh, matter of fact, Alan was mentioning a 3D virtual that is free right now. So I will highly recommend you do that um, and and basically sketch out the room. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But but transaction desk like like there's a couple of things that are like like, like if you uh, if, if you're an, if you're an agent that that primarily uses Georgia MLS and you run a lot of transactions through transaction desk like this is one that you need to know right mm-hmm. like this is just like like this is this is like keeping it simple stupid right if, if this is like a core fundamental class that you need to have. It, and even if you've been in the business for a while, it's always growing and changing. Last time I took it, it was like, oh, wow, I can do that now. There's so much good stuff right. in there. And then on Thursday, I'm up at the airport office, I'm going to be teaching effective negotiating. And so like, like when you talk to especially sellers and buyers, I mean, one of the, one of the, one of the common things that they want out of us in, in through a real estate transaction is how to negotiate. negotiate. And so please join me on Thursday at our airport office up there. So um hope that you guys and as uh, always we always have KB core training so okay. please do uh take some time and learn it because this system is going to make you money while you're yep. late. So we hope you guys have a great week if we can any kind of service please call text smoke signals we answer it all. Thank you. Have, have a great a week. Fabulous Monday. Bye bye.